Okay, so it's been a while since my last SDR transceiver and uh, my apologies for that. I had a few things going on. Uh, but anyway, uh, where we left off was uh, I'd completed the block diagram but hadn't completed necessarily all the circuits underneath it. So I've done that and not only done that but actually uh, rendered a PCB. So let's have a quick look at that. So here's the uh, PCB and uh, KiCad has this handy little 3D viewer. So you can see uh, here's the PCB with all the components laid out. And just at a high level to go through the components. So this is where the uh, ESP32 is going to sit. Uh, this is the power supply circuitry underneath it. Uh, this is where the SI5351 is going to be uh, plugged in. Uh, now here's the audio switch right here with that FST3257. Um, up the top here we have the Taylor encoder. So this is... Uh, uh, this takes the uh, LO and an audio signal and produces uh, uh, the single, single sideband output. And then down below here we have the, um, uh, the TALO detector which uh, performs receive circuitry. Um, just a couple of other things. So this is the microphone preamp here. Um, and then finally we have the, uh, or the RF switching here which consists of those two relays that uh, we mentioned before. Uh, this is the uh, uh, PCB mounted uh, BNC plug. Uh, this is a uh, an audio switch which I'm using to control the uh, the amplifier, uh, and then I've got a couple of encoders down the bottom here to uh, to allow me to control not only the frequency but uh, other settings inside the uh, inside the ESP32. So just one other thing to note: this is a uh, six inches by four inches uh, PCB. And quite frankly, I mean, these are 0 0.5 millimeter tracers. I'm at the edge of uh, what I'm able to accomplish at home. It's getting, uh, it's getting quite difficult. Uh, one of the other things I've noticed, uh, if you'll be following my videos for a while, uh, you've seen I've, I've been using this product called Fab in a Box. Um, well, it looks like uh, Fab in a Box uh, is, uh, is up for sale at the moment. Uh, so that's unfortunate. And uh, so what that means is I'm going to have to find an alternate mechanism to produce PCBs. Uh, I have been experimenting, uh, and you'll see the board that I've, uh, that I've produced uh, with the uh, ultraviolet resist uh, mechanism. Uh, it's quite a bit fiddlier than the Fab in a Box. I much prefer the Fab in a Box. Um, if anyone's interested in me walking through the process of uh, doing uh, PCB UV resist uh, style of uh, PCB production, uh, just drop me a comment down below. I'd, I'd happy to do that. But anyway, let's uh, move on down now to the board itself. Have a look at that, and uh, and uh, that's coming right up. Okay, so here's the uh, the board here, and as I said, it's about six inches by four inches. Uh, and as you can see, the uh, it's, it's quite a dense board, um, and and really. Uh, at the edge of my both my patience and my abilities, I think, uh, with PCB. So I have actually um, uh, sent off to JLC PCB uh, to get this uh, made properly. I, ne I never really like doing that, though, because you, you, you're bound to sort of make some mistake here. You send it off, and then you wait a couple of weeks. Uh, you get it back, and you find a glaring error on the board. So, well, we'll see anyway. Um, so anyway... Uh, what, what I have to do is uh, obviously drill all the holes on this, and there are quite a few, but not only the uh, through hole for the through hole components, but also for the vias, and you can see them right here. So I've got quite a bit of drilling to do. I'll go ahead and do that, and then uh, we'll come back and start uh, mounting some components on it. One other thing of note, I, I did get my uh, four channel scope back from Siglent, so it's back in uh, operation. Uh, I sent it off to them and they repaired it uh, without charge, so I uh, can't complain about that. So a little plug for Siglent, great uh, customer service. Um, anyway, let's uh, get that board drilled out and uh, come right back. Okay, so here's the, uh, the board with the vias all drilled. As you can see, I've uh, sort of temporarily placed some of the headers in there. Uh, but I did jinx myself. Uh, um, after printing the board, I realized this is uh, where the audio output is right here. I've forgotten to put a uh, uh, audio output jack, so uh, I'm not going to reprint this board. Um, I'll just uh, have to hook up a uh, audio output right here. Um, so anyway, I'm sure I'll find some other stuff that I've forgotten on this, but, uh, but anyway, um, 
I'll move on now to what I'll do next is this is the uh, power supply circuitry right here. Uh, and then this is the um, ESP32 programming interface. Uh, that's So you plug a uh, USB to serial adapter in here and then you've got a couple of buttons here. So what I'll do is I'll get all this installed and then we'll be able to mount that uh, ESP32 uh, header that I prepared earlier in there and uh, see, see if it comes to life. Okay, so as you can see, here's the uh, power supply circuitry right here, and that's installed. I've got the headers installed here. Here's the header for the USB to serial adapter, and then there's a, uh, there's a uh, boot and reset to button here. And then that pair of transistors, which allows uh, sort of uh, automatic updates without uh, pressing the boot and uh, reset pins. I also um, installed some of these little components here with a view to uh, once this head is installed, these are pretty hard to get to. Um, so it's all ready to go. I mean, basically, uh, here's my uh, ESP32 board, and I'll just get that installed there. As you can see, that sort of just uh, that just sort of goes in there, and uh, we'll go over to uh, go over to the uh, laptop and uh, try and program a simple program. Okay, so here we go, uh, ready to, to program, and I've just got a simple program that sort of prints hello every uh, once every second. But here's the uh, uh, USB to serial adapter right here that's plugged into the laptop. Uh, the ESP32A1S is uh, plugged into the board, and I've got a power applied. So uh, let's just give that a go. And uh, once it gets around to flashing it, you can see that uh, there it goes. It's transmitting the... Uh, the code to the board and, and I'm not having to uh, press this uh, the boot and reset uh, pins. I, I have noticed some uh, strange behavior depending on the order that you plug in the USB to serial adapter versus power to the board so not quite sure what's going on but this does seem uh, reasonably reliable. Um, so what I'll do now is uh, just to confirm that the ESP32 is all good to go I'm going to get the SI5351 uh, header uh, installed and then uh, you know basically I'll be able to install the SI5351 uh, and get it to output some uh, frequencies of interest uh, so that's coming right up. Okay so I've uh, installed the uh, uh, SI5351 header uh, which is just behind the board as you can see here but I did discover a problem unfortunately another problem on the board I actually had the uh, SI5351 powered from 5 volts, which is a mistake. It should be powered from 3.3 volts. Um, basically, the uh, voltage level of the I2C pins needs to match the voltage level of the uh, SI5351 board. So basically, this is the 5 volt line here. I've cut this, and then I've connected uh, a bodge wire between the VN of the uh, SI5351, and then this is a 3.3 volt uh, uh, power supply that goes to the board. So anyway, let's go and uh, just confirm this works. Okay, so here's the uh, uh, the board all hooked up there and I'm using this little uh, test program that I've used many times before uh, and it's outputting uh, uh, 7 megahertz uh, and as you can see on the oscilloscope over here, so I'm probing uh, cl uh, clock zero on the SI53, I am getting 7 uh, megahertz in the output there, nice clean signal. So that does confirm the um, uh, that the SI5351 is working. What I might do is uh, uh, basically uh, uh, call a halt to this video. There's, there's quite a few, it looks like there's going to be quite a few uh, challenges on the board. I've made a few mistakes. So what I might do is, um, you know, I'll, I'll get this video out there and then um, I'm going to do some checking on the board to see if I've made any other uh, big oversights. Uh, and if I have, I'll, uh, you know, do a follow-up video on that. But I, I kind of don't, don't want to really debug it in real time. And, and I haven't put out a video for a while, so I thought I'd let me get this out there and then uh, uh, just, to, uh, just to prove I'm still around, I guess. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that's all for this uh, video. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, definitely more to come. Um, I'm going to, I think what I'm going to try next is confirm that all the audio processing uh, circuitry is um, is working fine. So by that I mean 
that the uh, that I can talk to the ES uh, 8388. I can inject an audio signal. I can do the usual sort of transform stuff. But anyway, uh, that'll be coming up in the next video. Hope you enjoyed this one. That's all for now.